There have been several questions posted on social media and a few asked directly about three-phase electric motors, how to follow the wiring, what to do to change rotation direction, how do I recognise the differences between DOL motors and star delta motors. In fact, what is a direct online motor? Let's take a look at the basics of these motor arrangements. It's all in the wiring. We need to find the motor terminal box, which is located on the exterior of the motor and will tell us much of what we need to know about how the motor has been set up. Inside the box is the motor terminal strip, six terminals with or without brass strips. The top photograph shows a motor terminal block with no brass strips and no power supply conductors. This is what you will see with a new motor straight off the shelf. The blue wires shown here disappear inside the motor casing where they are connected to the motor windings and we leave these in place. Here we've arrowed the U1 terminal marked in yellow. This wire finds its way into the motor, passes through the U motor windings and reappears on the opposite side of the motor block as U2, still marked in yellow. Notice that the two yellow ends are offset to each other. Then we have two red marked wires for V1 and V2 and the V winding and finally marked in grey the W1 and W2 wires going to the W winding. In the lower photograph we've added two brass strips to the terminal block making this a star configuration and also added the three power conductors red, yellow and blue in this case. I look at the motor block and internal wiring of the motor windings like this. The lower rank of terminals are marked U1, V1 and W1, all the 1s. The upper rank is all the 2s, but offset, so we have W2, U2 and V2. In this drawing, the U winding is marked in blue and connects between U1 and U2. The V winding is between V1 and V2 and marked in green here. The W1 terminal is the rightmost lower terminal and the W2 terminal is the leftmost on the upper rank. And the winding, the W winding, is marked here in red. This drawing, shown like this, helps me to visualise the path of the electrical current through the starter wiring and through the motor windings. There are three possible configurations or connection types for the three-phase motor. Options 1 and 2, if there are brass strips connected across the terminals and only three power conductors, then the motor is set up as a direct online starter and the position of the brass strips will determine if it is a delta configuration or a star setup. The motor rating plate will indicate which configuration to use according to the available power supply voltage. Option 3, if there are no brass strips and six power conductors, then we have a star delta configuration. DOL or direct online starters are the simplest and least expensive method of starting a motor with limitations. The motor is connected directly across the power supply so that the motor receives the full working voltage as soon as the start button is pressed. This has drawbacks, high inrush currents as the motor is starting from stationary and takes time to reach optimum RPM. The high inrush current may cause a momentary voltage drop on the supply and it is recommended that direct online starting is limited to smaller motors of 4 kilowatts or less. They should be installed with overload protection to protect against short circuit issues at startup and overheating. A star delta starter will first connect the motor windings in a star configuration. This will reduce the starting torque and starting current as the supply voltage is across two windings in series. Two windings in series will increase the impedance, reduce the voltage across each winding and reduce the current flowing. After a few seconds the star contactor will drop out and the delta contactor will pull into circuit. The supply voltage is now fully across each winding allowing the motor to operate at full voltage, power and torque. The motor 
but operates most efficiently in this delta mode. Let's begin by looking at a direct online motor in a delta configuration. For clarity and ease of understanding, the drawings have been kept as basic as possible. Hence, control wiring etc. has been left off the drawings in this video. The supply will enter the circuit from the distribution board at L1, L2 and L3. We have a three-phase circuit breaker, a contactor and an overload relay before the power arrives at the motor block. There will be appropriate control wiring and a stop-start switch box. Shown here are the connections for a delta configuration. Three brass strips are arranged across the block, connecting U1 to W2, V1 to U2 and W1 to V2. Let's follow the route of the electric from the circuit breaker at L1 and all the way back to L3. From the incoming supply at L1, current passes through the circuit breaker, then through the contactor and the overload relay to the W2 terminal on the motor block. From W2, the wiring goes into the motor through the W motor winding and then to the W1 terminal. From W1, through the brass strip to the V2 terminal and then back through the overload relay, the contactor and the circuit breaker to the L3 terminal at the distribution board. There is also a second route, L1 to W2 and along the brass strip to U1, through the U winding to U2 and then back to L2. How will a star configuration differ? This is still a direct online or DOL arrangement. This is the same format for the circuit breaker, contactor and overload relay. What will change is the layout of the brass strips. This time they connect U1 to V1 to W1. All the ones are connected. And the power conductors are on the number 2 terminals as shown. Try to follow this electrical route yourself. Follow the same method and trace the route of the electrical flow from L1 through the windings to L2 and then follow the route from L1 to L3. With a new installation or when replacing a motor there may be a need to change the direction of rotation of the motor. There are several ways of achieving this and personally I prefer to make the wiring changes at the motor terminal block whenever possible. Nothing could be simpler. All that we need to do is change the position of any two of the three power conductors. Here we've taken black from U2 and put it onto the V2 terminal and then moved the grey from V2 to U2. Hey presto, opposite direction of rotation. Then, just to show how it works, we've exchanged brown and grey to reverse the direction again. And finally, we've changed the positions of black and grey to reverse the rotation direction a third time. Moving on, we now look at star delta changeover starters. It looks complicated at first, but it's not. When we break it down, it's actually very easy to follow. Again, we've left off the control gear, stop start, etc. for clarity and better understanding of the basics. This time, there are three contactors. A main contactor, which must be activated in both star and delta modes. There is a star contactor, which operates to start the motor turning. After a delay, the star contactor will drop out and the delta contactor will take over. Notice that there are no brass strips on the motor block, but now we have six power conductors, not three. Let's start up the motor in star configuration. This will give a reduced starting current and torque. The main and star contactors are on, the contacts are closed. The delta contactor has not been enabled and takes no part in the startup. Electrical flow is through two windings in series at startup, from L1 at the circuit breaker to terminal U1 at the motor block, then through the U winding inside the motor to terminal U2, then to the bridge on the star contactor and back along the blue wire to terminal V2. Now through the V winding to terminal V1 and then through the main contactor and breaker to L2. In star configuration, the supply voltage is across two windings. 
U and V in this example. Once the motor is rotating and after a few seconds delay, the contactors will change over to delta operation. The star contactor is disabled and the delta contactor comes into circuit along with the main contactor. The motor will operate with full voltage across each winding and at full torque. Follow the route from L1 and back to L2 at the distribution board. The flow is from L1 at the circuit breaker to terminal U1 on the motor block, through the U winding inside the motor to terminal U2, then through the delta contactor and circuit breaker to L2 at the distribution board. The voltage is now across just one motor winding, U in this example, and this happens in rotation with each winding, U, V and W. As always, it's good to practice and understand what is happening. Here's an exercise for you to try yourself. Pause the video and trace the star and delta changeover through the windings for L1 to L2, as we've just done, and repetition is good, then L1 to L3, and finally L2 to L3. And lastly, a frequent question. How do we change direction with a star delta starter? To change rotation direction with a star delta arrangement, there are three methods. As previously mentioned, I prefer to make my changes at the motor terminal block. To do this, exchange any two conductors on both sides of the motor block. In this example, we've exchanged the red and yellow supply conductors at W2 and U2, so we must exchange the red and yellow supply wires at terminals U1 and V1. And here is that change of wiring shown at the motor block. For practice, trace the wiring and show that the motor direction has changed from UVW direction to UWV direction. And I'll leave that one with you. Pause the video and follow the wiring. Thank you for watching. I hope that you found this video useful and that you've put a little more knowledge into your mental toolbox. This video shows the most common methods of wiring in electric motors. Different manufacturers may use different colours or different assembly methods. Older motors may be to different standards and installers may have used their own preferred colours. Treat this video as a guide and ensure your own understanding of the motor installation that you are working on. Look out for a follow-up video very soon where we will look at the control wiring, the two other methods of reversing rotation direction and how to install a forward and reverse changeover switch that eliminates the need to change the wiring. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer or smart device. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.